Well, thank you for joining me again on my channel. This is Carol King, and I'm taking a break from the textures series that we're doing to do some tulips for Easter. Uh, they always are blooming and looking so beautiful in the yard just in time for Easter. So that's what I think we'll paint this weekend. I hope you join me. I hope you have fun. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe. Um, I think tulips are probably the most beautiful flower. Sorry, I got in front of the camera there. And um, they can be fairly easy to paint. Um, so we're going to uh, do some quick tulips. We're now pre-drawing it. I mean, you could do that. But um, the, the reason I'm not is it can get kind of complicated. I'm trying to zero in my focus here and make sure that it's seeing the page properly. Okay. Okay, so uh, I've already softened up my watercolors. If you haven't, give them a quick spray. Get them, get them wet again. I'm sorry, I sprayed over the words. I guess I should have sealed those. Because um, now you can't see the words, but y'all know by now which colors are there. Okay, let's see here. What we want to start with is a fat round, the fattest round that you have, uh, which in my case, um, that's not the fattest round that I have, but I think it might be the fattest round that you have in your set. This is my preferred one. See the difference? Um, this is a number eight, and I really like it for doing things like this. But I'm going to use what you guys have, which I think this is probably the biggest one you have, number four, if I remember the sets, because I didn't want you to have to spend 20 or $30 on brushes just for the class. So I put the basics in there. I am going to grab some, uh, over here on this side is the rose color, which I kind of like for this. And we're going to do three tulips. And this can be as loose or as, uh, I think I'm going to do water first. This can be as loose or as tight, I guess is the word, as you want. I'm going to create an oval with my water like an egg. Just make an egg. And we're way over to the left because there's going to be three of them. So way over to the left. I have wet an oval circle. I don't know if you can, you can tell that once I put my colors in. So let me start putting some color in and you'll see the shape of my egg. Okay. We're not filling in the whole thing. Okay. We're just sort of letting it blend into the, because we want a little light area in the middle, maybe a touchy yellow sometimes these tulips have. Going to leave some light up here, just sort of let it blend, but leave the, some white in the middle. And while it is still a little bit wet, we're going to touch a little bit of this green down here. For our stem. That's about the right thickness for the stem. You don't want it too thick. And tulip leaves are pointy like this, so I'm going to uh, remove a little bit of this water up here to make it lighter, like if the light was hitting that part of the leaf, and then come down here with a little more green to make it darker towards the bottom. And on this tulip, I'm also adding some more. I noticed it really lightened up. And uh, while you've got that wet, I'm trying to slow down just a little bit. Oops, you can't see my stem with my paint tray. Let me move that out. Okay, there you go. Now you see that leaf that I was telling you about. What I did is I painted it and then I lifted out like this with my, I dried the brush and I lifted out some of the color so that you could see a highlight on that leaf. And then while it's still shiny and wet, I'm going to go into my blue 
and just put a little bit of dark. That was too wet. Uh, a lot of times I will take, I will get the paint on my, and then uh, on my brush, and then dab it on my wiping cloth so that it's not quite as watery. I wiped that too much, so I'm removing paint. But I'm gonna come back. We want so woo. Actually, that could wind up looking kind of cool if we left that. Remember, it's going to lighten when it dries. So, I'm not going to mess with that too much. I'm just going to add a little more green to it. Okay, that works. I, I like the way that's looking. So, uh, remember, it's going to lighten a little bit. So, I think that this works out. Um, nicely. Watercolors, remember, you can't control it a lot, but sometimes what it does is it, it, it's like, oh, yeah, I like that. We're going to remove a little bit right there and say the light is hitting that little spot right there. I'll bring a little more of that towards the top. Okay. Now that that uh, tulip up here is almost completely dry, we can put another petal on it, which again, I will start with a clean brush with a little bit of water on it. And I'm going to put a little mark right there, and then you'll see a little better if you need to wait just a second until I put color on it because it may not be very visible. It's got to meet the bottom. Remember, think about a circle. Think about the bottom of a bowl. If you bring this down too far, then it's not going to connect. So think about the bottom of a bowl right here. We're just connecting our little, little uh, extra petal on there. And there's a little one right there that's the, far, the one that's further back. that sit for just a minute before I put more in it because it's got a lot of I want this side to be a little lighter so I'm removing some of that color before it sets in completely okay there we go now we'll let that sit for a minute and move around and we can do another one right next to it here and he can be a different color if you want. Um, some, some are obviously red, orange, whatever. Let's see here. Okay, I'm going to make this one kind of peachy. And the way you do peach is with orange and red mixed together. So I've got our orange and I'm adding some red to it. And that will give you peach. And when I say orange, I'm talking about this vermilion color over here. Okay. See, while it's wet, you can lift up some color. So that's why it's wonderful um, how you can do that in watercolors. It's just, I, I find watercolors very fascinating. Um, difficult to control, yes. Annoying sometimes, yes. But, wow. I, I just love what you can do with them. That you, you can't do with other mediums as far as effects. So we've got a little light spot there. Probably should make it a little closer to the neighbor's light spot as far as the direction of the light. So, okay. So we're going to let that dry. And let's say the next one is um, yellow. 
And he's a little younger, so he's a baby. So he'll be just a little bit smaller. And again, it's mostly the shape of an egg. And then you can come back and... I made a V at the top of this one so that it looks like a baby uh, leaf is coming out one side. Now the yellows usually have a little bit of other colors in them, so I'm going to put a little bit of red right here around the edges. Usually they're not just yellow. A lot of times at the top, they'll have a little bit of color. Just let the water do something with that. We can uh, create a little bit of shadow. I'm going to try this. I, I, I don't know how this is going to look, but the burnt sienna might create some shadow at the bottom of our yellow egg. And then we can use the darker yellow as well. And this is where the seam is. Okay, now this uh, peachy one is dry, so we can go back and put in its second petal. I'm going to do this one dry because I, I don't necessarily need quite as much blending on the second petal. And he's disappearing about three quarters of the way down of the other one. I'm going to add some darker color. Now, if you find a photo that you like of a tulip, you can trace it. Um, uh, what, the easiest way to do that, if you don't want to have to do a whole lot of um, sort of winging it like I'm doing right now, which I do for a reason, um, it, when you're painting... Sometimes it just looks better if you don't pre-draw it. And I taught a class uh, at a family reunion. And uh, one of the comments was, if, if it had not been pre-drawn, I felt like I could do more of what I wanted with the picture. So that's the reason I didn't send everybody, you know, patterns uh, or whatever to pre-draw everything. Because um, I, I think it's better if you can rearrange it. You could make one of these tulips a lot bigger and the others more in the background. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do, but that I thought that was a legitimate comment. And so that's the reason that I'm not, uh, you know, pre-drawing everything for you. But you can. You can look up some photos of tulips and say, I like that. I'm going to paint that, you know. And as long as you're not selling it, you can copy you know, uh, work from others. You can't uh, enter something that's copied into an art show and you can't enter something that is, uh, uh, you can't sell something that is copied because it's a copyright issue. But if you've got, uh, there's a, a group on Facebook called Free Reference Photos for Artists and they're completely uh, copyright free. You can paint them to your heart content. You can even sell them without a problem. But most of the time when you see a picture online, there is a copyright involved with whoever took that picture. So you can certainly take it and paint it for yourself for your own pleasure. Uh, any time of the day or night, as many times as you want, uh, as long as you're not selling it. So, or distributing it on the website, you know. So that's your art copyright lesson for the day. Which I have done a lot of research on, as you can probably imagine. I'm bringing in a little bit of highlight right there to define where the back petal meets the front petal. And I'm going to go ahead and put in these stems for these little guys. Not too fat. You don't want them too fat. It's pretty much the width of my brush. I'm, I'm going back over it to straighten it out, but it's pretty much the width of my brush is the size of what I did there. And then I'm th throwing in a little blue, but I'm, I'm not, you notice I'm not spending a lot of time mixing it. 
because you really just want the water to move around. You don't necessarily want to mess with it too much. Do have to add a little green so it doesn't look quite so blue. And then we'll put another petal here. And this one just has one petal that you can see. And this one has a petal. You, well, maybe put. Okay. Just as long as they're pointy coming down, that's the way those tulips are. I love tulips. I have several different types of tulips in my... Well, actually, that was my old house. I don't have them at this house, so I'm going to have to plant them. The lady I bought this house from loved irises, and so there's lots of irises. About a 30-foot row of them out front. Okay. I'm going to lift a little bit at the top. Okay. Uh, now see, this is one thing you want to watch for. When I cleaned my brush, I wiped the end off, but I left a big petal, a puddle drop of water right there. Do you see that? If you're in the middle of painting, that's going to keep creeping down, and all of a sudden you've got a big drop of water right in the middle of your work, and it it will be a mess. Um, so, so remember, don't do what I do, and dry off the end of your brush after you you know sort when you're wiping the end of your brush. Remember to get to the uh, hand, not the handle, but the the part that holds the brush together, because the water will sit there and be a bit of a problem later on. I think this tulip, need, it looks a little uneven, so I think what I might do is I'm going to join these two petals and put another one on this side. So the third one is actually over here. I think that makes it a little more even. It just looked like it was, wasn't was even, so I think that's going to look better when we're done. I'm going to remove a little bit of light in the spot on it. Okay, now I'm going to dip into this rose color over here, and we're going to put in some more detail into the tulip, which is wanted the first layer to dry first. And you know how tulips have a little color around the edges usually? So that's what we're doing to these. I'm just adding some a little bit of color around the edge. Some lines down the middle, which um, look better if you sort of wet them just a tiny bit. It's not, I don't want it completely wet, just a little bit damp. So that that doesn't look like too strict of a line. But it does add a little bit of color. And you can put a little purple in here. Remember uh, the way that variations of color work is it's never all just one that's why i put a little yellow in the middle because there's always a little bit of variation in your colors the way the light hits them the way the sun is shining in a certain place and even the way that they grow they will often have several different colors within that uh, part of the tulip so
Now this back one, we're going to come in the middle. I'm giving a little bit of white uh, around the edge. It's darker in the middle. And this is a really very much of a shadow area, so I'm going to use blue for the shadow area to sort of differentiate. When it mixes with the red, it's going to be purple anyway, but it's just a slightly different purple. And then I'm going to wet my brush and blend that out just a little bit. Okay, and we'll, when it's dry, we'll put another line on there so that it's more distinct. And on this back one, he's in the back, so put a little blue right there in the shadow. Okay, when we come back to do our final lines on this, you will um, will be able to differentiate a little bit more. Oops, there's that drip again. A little bit more. I am darkening this so that you can see better that that is the back petal. And I'm softening the edge with a wet, clean brush to sort of let that flow into it rather than be a sharp edge. Okay, uh, we'll go back over to our peachy one. The complementary to orange is blue, so we'll use blue in our shadows on this one uh, because the peach has got a lot of orangey tints in it. So we're going to dip into our probably cerulean blue. Let's see how that looks to be the shadow on that color. I think that works for the shadow. I like the fact that it's kind of transparent at the top and almost melts into the paper. Softening the edge with a clean brush again so that it flows into it. And I get some orange and a little of that red mixed together and come into this back petal. And I'm adding a little of that blue, maybe ultramarine, to this because it is a deeper shadow. Okay, there we go. That's a little trick to painting, by the way, is knowing what your complementary colors are. You can get a color wheel. Uh, you can download it online and print it on your printer. You can uh, buy them at, at any art store is going to have them. I think even Walmart might have a color wheel that you can buy in their artist section. Uh, and it's basically, it shows you what the complementary color is. And the reason that is important to know the complementary colors is when you're going to the, the shadow areas, you want the complementary color um, in order to, to make it more realistic. Um, and when you're trying to make something way back in the far background, that's how you do um, and that's how you make something look further back let's see here if I've got uh, a field with a bunch of red flowers okay it's brighter up front where all the red flowers are okay it's in the back it's not only lighter it you have to change the doing it lighter is not enough. You have to change the tone. You add a little bit of the complementary color and really water it down. You've got the the feeling of distance. It's the same with a grass field. If you have a grass field, it's all bright and you made it lighter in the back, trying to make it look further, and you're like, well, that doesn't really look like it's further back. It just, you know. If you add ever the slightest tint of red to that background, that might be a little, see, it sends it way back there, and your eye understands that to be further back. So, it let's see, my re the reflection is affecting that. See, when I added the red, 
all of a sudden it sent it way back. And same thing with this. When you add a little bit of green at the top, it sends the, it tells the eye that that's way back. And that's by using complementary colors. So that's just a little art lesson for you there. But anyway, let's get back to our pink and orange. And we're going to put a little bit of edging on this petal here so that you can see that he's got some color at the top. Okay. And I don't like the way that blended right there, so I'm going to help it blend just a little bit more because it left too sudden of a line for my taste. Maybe he just needs a little more red in there. Okay. I blended it with my finger. You can do that. If it's not super wet, it works quite well. Okay, I think the middle tulip is the prettiest right now. They don't all come out the same always, remember. <laughs> Even us artists, we, we are subject to variations in our artwork. Or what I mean is even us professionals that have done it for many, many years, we still cannot uh, always control watercolors especially. They sometimes have a mind of their own. I am allowing some little lines here, and I probably should move to a slightly smaller brush for the lines. But right now, I'm just intensifying the color at the bottom. The complement to yellow is purple. So, or violet. I'm sorry, violet, not purple. We're going to grab a little bit of violet. Not a lot, because it will be strong. Just a little bit of violet on our brush for our shadows down here. There is a seam in between the two, and we want that. I took, a, I put a little more yellow on my brush and came to blend it over the violet so that it was a, a mixed shadow, a mixed, mixed colors in the shadow. Okay. I really should have a painter's apron. I keep wiping my brush on my shirt. I think I've got one somewhere. Uh, let's put a little bit of red in the middle of this seam here. Because we had a little bit of pink up here in our petals. Okay, we're going to let that dry. Well, maybe a little more of a seam, right? A line right there. And I've got yellow on my brush now. I'm just sort of brightening up these colors just a little bit. So he's not quite so faded of a yellow. And I'm adding water to that. Okay, but this line I'm letting be a little sharper because that's, that's kind of the shadow in between. And when that dries, we'll come back to it. So right now we're going to take a finer brush and finish these things up. See a fine point. The number one is fine. Number two is fine. As long as it's got a fine point, you're going to be able to do the edges here. Now I'm going to grab some more, some purer of this rose color with a little bit of that purple so that it's somewhat dark. And we're going to define this front petal here just a little bit better needs to be a little bit darker because we need it to stand out. And I'm not blending or wetting right here. I'm just 
defining where the edge of that petal is a little bit more. Same here, so that it looks like he's in front of the guy behind, because there, when we finished our last step, it looked like you didn't really tell that the, this petal was in front of the other one, and we want it to be obvious that he's in front. So now we'll just put a couple little tips on this one out here, just to sort of define the edge. And I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine mixed with our dark uh, sap green. And now that this is dry, I can come in and define the bottom of the leaf a little bit more. You can leave it alone if you want, but as you figured out before, I'm like a preacher. I have several closings before I'm actually done. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm done and Oops, no, I want to tweak that. And so you don't have to do that. You can stop at whatever point you like it, even if it's loose and undefined. If it looks good to the eye, that's where you stop. And with watercolors, that's really hard to do because you're like, oh, I passed my stopping point like 10 minutes ago. I should have left it alone. It looked better then. So sometimes if you get to a point where you like it and it's not finished or, you know, we haven't done everything that I'm telling you to do, you can just stop and say, hey, I've I like it just like that. I'm going to put a little shadow right here where these this leaf touches in because obviously where they connect is going to be a little bit darker because they're blocking the light from each other. And that little bit of green that I had at the base here kind of washed out, so I'm putting it back and blending it a little bit with the old color. <clears throat> Maybe even adding a little bit of lemon yellow right there to sort of cause a little more blending. Okay, now we'll go over and do the outline on our peachy one. And uh, for that, I'm just going to grab a little bit more of my rose, add, mix a little bit of the... Um, vermilion with it and just make a couple of lines on the edges we just want to define a little bit more and I'm going to use my hand to soften that up a little bit I don't want to completely soften it like I with water but I just don't want the lines to be too sharp Now that one I am going to water down because I was, I wanted that to blend out. Okay, a little more of our red on the back. Okay, I think we're probably good on that. And we'll finish up our orange, and I think our little tulips are done. I think we're going to highlight with a little bit of orange mixed with purple for this middle, middle shadow where the two or the new leaf is opening up against the old leaf. Just darkening that up a little bit more to define that it is still opening. And I put a little bit of water on the edge to let it uh, mix. Okay, a little bit of the new gambage can be our brighter color at the top. 
to define the top of it a little better. And I think we can call it done um, since I quit piddling around. I'm just adding a few lines. Sometimes when they're not opening yet, there's some sharper colors on them. Maybe even a little shadow spot where there's a bit of a fold because it's not open yet. And if you're going to do that, you need to soften at least one side of that to make it look more realistic. Okay, so we're going to say we're done with our little tulips. You don't have to put anything in the background, but that would make a nice little card for somebody. Well, thank you for joining me to paint these tulips. Uh, I hope you will like the video and subscribe. And as always, keep painting.